Hi everyone, Jeremy here. Uh, it's been a while since I've made a video and at the prodding of my husband and one of my friends, I'm making, I'm finally making another video. So here we go. I am currently working on uh, the Kimberbell Broomhilda Bakery uh, quilt. It's a Halloween themed quilt. Let me grab the book. So it's been out for a couple of years, and I never do anything uh, when it first comes out just because I always seem to lag behind on things. But I saw the design and, and uh, the quilt, and I just thought it was flat adorable. And so I decided to bite the bullet and buy the embroidery version of the quilt. Um, when you open it, there is your design CD there. Uh, nearly all of the blocks are done with your embroidery module. There are a few blocks that are traditionally pieced blocks. Um, <clears throat> and so I'm working towards the end um, and thought that I had better get a video of one of these blocks kind of explaining how the process goes before I completely finished the quilt. Um, I will say this is one of the most fun embroidery projects that I've ever done. And uh, I've just been too, I've been having too much fun to stop and take the time to make a video. So here we are. Uh, so in my hoop, I have my background fabric. Um, on each piece of the background fabric for every design that's done in the hoop, you will fuse Pellon SF-101, or also known as Shapeplex, on the back of this fabric. I also have hooped a layer of OESD Heavyweight Tearaway Stabilizer. Going to get that label out and show you what it looks like. OESD heavyweight tearaway. I would not use the lighter weight tearaway, such as Ultra Clean and Terry. It's a nice stabilizer. If you have that one, it, or if that's all that you can get, um, I would use two layers of the Ultra Clean and Tear. But if you have the heavyweight, you can get by with one. I am a firm and strong believer in OESD products, uh, their stabilizers. Uh, it's what I can get locally, and I just have the best results for them. So that is what I'm using in this project. The other product that I'm using, let me get my labels back together. And when you open a roll of stabilizer, take your label off and roll it up and tuck it on the inside. That way you remember what you have. Um, for my applique pieces, and in this particular thing that we're going to do today, these are my applique pieces. And on the back of those uh, fabrics, I have used OESD Softweb. Uh, <clears throat> it just gives a little body to your applique pieces. Uh, give some body without making them heavy. Um, and I just think it makes them lay nicer when uh, you uh, when you lay them down on the project to be stitched. Um, it is paper back, so you fuse it down with the paper side up, and then before you stitch it down, you peel the paper off. Okay, and you will notice I have my uh, center mark uh, marked on my hoop. So I'm going to go to the machine, get my design centered, and then we will proceed to get armpit deep in the embroidery process. Okay, so we are at the machine. I have centered uh, 
my design in the hoop using my pinpoint placement. And we're gonna start off with the very first stitch. Um, this is kind of an interesting block. This is the witch cupcake block. Um, and so what it is, it is a, I think you can see it's, it's a cupcake with the witch leg sticking out. And then uh, after we applique that, then there is clear vinyl that we applique over the entire thing. And, and that step is just a little bit different than normal machine applique. But the very first stitches in this design are a registration line at the bottom. And to be perfectly honest with you, I kind of don't understand the point of this registration line. If someone knows, please explain it to me. Um, I thought it was a registration line for cutting because all of these blocks, after you get them, after you finish the embroidery, you trim them down. Um, and the, the book tells you the sizes. Um, but based on the cutting directions, these registration lines do not uh, add up. Um, now, let me also say I have not cut any of my blocks down yet, so I may change my tune on that once I get to cutting them down. So, to err on the side of caution, even though I think that the registration lines are not necessary, I am still stitching them. Uh, and so, let's stitch that first um, registration line. I believe the second stitching is a basting box, which again, doesn't make any sense to me because I've got everything hooped up. Um, but after those two, I promise we will be in the nitty gritty of uh, machine applique. Okay, so let's get this started. Okay, so our first registration line is sewn, and now let's do, uh, I can tell the second color on the screen. You may not be able to see it. I think you can see that box around the entire applique design. That is uh, this basting box. I, again, I don't see the need for it, but I'm gonna go ahead and stitch it. Okay, so that is done. One other thing I wanted to point out, and you can see it just here in the corner. Uh, I've cut all, I've cut the fact, the background fabric according to the directions in the book. Um, this, all of the blocks in this uh, design are made for a five by seven hoop. There are a few blocks that are done in your four by four hoop. If you're using a Bernina, the two hip hoops that you would use would be your large oval and your medium square hoop. Um, I recently bought the uh, Bernina midi hoop, which is only slightly larger than the large oval hoop. It kind of replaces your large oval hoop. Um, so when doing that, your on this end and on the upper end, your fabric is shorter than um than your stabilizer and that's okay you can use um embroidery tape kimberbell makes an embroidery tape i sometimes get cheap i did not buy the embroidery tape um 
because scotch tape works just fine. Because you're not stitching through it, you're merely using it to hold it down to the stabilizer for your hooping. So, okay, let's go back to the screen. And you probably cannot tell it, but my first applique stitch out is going to be uh, the cupcake cup. Or the cupcake liner, I guess it would be. So, um, and I am going to stitch that in a black and white fabric. Um, I have a purple thread in the machine now. Um, I have found, as my eyes are aging, when it comes to my placement stitch and my tack down stitch, I do not use a thread that matches my fabric because I can't see it. Um, <laughs> so I purposely do it in an alternating color. And then when I get down to my uh, cover stitch, which all of these are gonna be a satin stitch, then I uh, switch to the, the thread that matches my fabric. So let's... Uh, stitch the placement stitch. What if, if you've never done applique in the hoop before, this first stitch, it's a placement stitch. It, it shows you where on the block you're going to uh, place your fabric. Okay, so now I am going to, um, uh, I have peeled the paper backing off of my applique fabric, and I'm going to lay that on top of that design. I've got a pretty generous amount of fabric there. And then we're just going to um, stitch that down, and it's going to stitch the exact same straight stitch again, because after this stitch, we have to trim the excess fabric away. And you will notice I don't use anything to adhere my fabric my applique fabric to the background, I just kind of get my fingers in here and, and, and work with it just to kind of hold it. Um, I'm not advising you do that. I don't want you sewing through your fingers, but I can do it. Now, if I sew my finger while I'm on a video, then you'll get to laugh at me for that. Okay, I'm going to trim this excess fabric away off camera and be right back with you. Okay, so I have trimmed very closely to the edge of my fabric um, without cutting those stitching lines. And let's see if you can tell. Yeah, I think you can see this one better. Our next um, stitch out is the placement line for the cupcake frosting. And again, I'm just using my plain purple thread because neither of these uh, applique pieces are gonna be done in purple. I wanna be able to see what I'm supposed to cut and what I'm not supposed to cut. Okay, now let's lay our frosting fabric down there. And sometimes you might want to peek underneath it just to make sure that you're getting it all in there. It looks like I am. Okay.
Okay, again, I'm going to trim this off the camera and we will move to the next thread change. Okay, our next um, stitch out in this design are the little lines, uh, decorative lines on the cupcake liner. Um, I, since I'm using a black and white fabric, I have moved to a black thread. Again, this is just a very short uh, stitch out. No, that's not what I meant to do. Okay, trim my thread. Okay, so that is our uh, cupcake liner decoration. Our next stitch out is the satin stitch around the cupcake. Um, and probably from this point on, by the time you watch this video, uh, we're gonna move in uh, fast forward mode because this is a long stitch out. Um, uh, the machine is telling me there is still 60 minutes left and that doesn't uh, include taking the time to change my thread or hit the pause button on uh, my camera here. So um, I'm going to change thread and be back with you. And then by the time you see this, it's going to go really, really fast. But keep in mind, this, take, this entire thing from start to finish takes a little bit over an hour um, to stitch out.
Okay, the cup, cupcake liner and frosting are finished. If you will notice, it uh, left us a gap here and over here. These are for the witch's legs and shoes, which are up next. Uh, her stockings are first, and then her shoes are the next are after that. I think I'm going to do her stockings in green, and then obviously her shoes in black. Uh, so again, let's get you, let's get going on that and you'll see the fast forwarded version.
Okay, so we have finished all of the fabric applique on this block. Now it is time to um, put the clear vinyl over this. The reason that we're putting the clear vinyl is it gives the effect that the cupcake is in one of those fancy little dessert stands. This is also a two-part block. Um, after this block, um, and I'll do a video on it as well, there is the dessert stand block. And so that when you sew them together, it looks like this little witch cupcake under a glass dome on a dessert stand. So um, now what is different about the clear vinyl applique? We go ahead and stitch our placement line, which is what we're about to do. And then after that, uh, it stitches the tack down line and the decorative cover stitch line. We do not trim the vinyl after the tack down stitch. Um, the vinyl will likely tear easy, and um, so we don't do that uh, in this. Um, so let's get that placement line tacked down, and then we'll move on to, uh, I'm sorry, let's do the placement line for the, the dome, and then we'll do the, um, I'll show you that the um, tack down stitch and decorative stitch are all one. Okay, so our placement line for the vinyl is done. Um, next, I'm going to lay the vinyl on top of the applique. I'm gonna be sure to, I, I think what this basting box is probably for, is probably a placement line for your vinyl. Um, I do want my vinyl to extend down past the cupcake because when I cut this block, I'm going to cut a quarter inch away from the cupcake. Um, and then when I cut the dessert stand block, I'm going to cut a quarter of an inch away from the cupcake stand so that when you um, sew the two blocks together with a quarter inch seam, the cupcake is literally sitting on top of the uh, dessert stand. And so I want to be sure and catch that vinyl in that seam allowance. Um, now, when it comes to pressing this stuff, that's uncharted territory. I'll let you know how that goes. So I don't know if you can see the vinyl, um, but I'm just gonna put it right there where I know it is well below that cupcake. You can tape this stuff down if you want to. Again, uh, this is just an area where I cut a quick little corner.
Okay, we have finished all of the applique on this block. Um, that screen on my Bernina tells me that we are finished. So off camera, I am going to trim the vinyl and show you what it looks like with uh, the vinyl trimmed. Um, again, notice that we did not cut the vinyl um, after we did the tack down stitch. The reason for that, if you were to cut the vinyl, even though this vinyl is specifically made for embroidery projects, this vinyl came in an embellishment kit from Kimberbell. Um, but what's gonna happen, what you run the risk of happening, if you cut the vinyl after that tack down stitch, um, you're gonna run the risk of pulling it out from the stitches or tearing the vinyl um, in the process. And so that's why that step is eliminated. And what we're gonna do, we're just gonna trim around about an eighth of an inch um, around that vinyl to clean that up. So again, I'm gonna do that off camera and then just give you a quick shot of that. Okay, so I have trimmed the vinyl. You probably can't see in the light. Let's get some glare on that and you can tell. And I just did it, I set an eighth of an inch. It's probably closer to a sixteenth of an inch. Um, so anyway, what I will do is I will remove the basting stitches, tear away the stabilizer on the back. I will leave this registration line here again I'm, I don't really understand it. It, it is what it is. Um, and so up next will be the dessert stand block, which takes only about 17 minutes. I stitched one last night. Uh, there are two blocks in the quilt that use the same dessert stand. And uh, so it goes really quick. There's no vinyl, nothing. It's uh, one applique fabric and that's it. So that's what will be up next for you. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to post this to a couple of Facebook groups. If you have any questions about it, you will likely get an answer there before you will here on YouTube. Um, anyway, enjoy and uh, please subscribe and share my videos. Thank you very much.